It was probably Wolfenstein 3D way back in the day where I learned how to play with mouse and keyboard. Simpler times they were. Much and more has occurred since uh, first I beheld Eorzea from, from the Galleon's deck. Suffice to say, I did not envisage being invited to play a part in your noble struggle. But forgive me, I have kept you over long. Doubtless, you have pressing business of your own. Rest assured that I no longer require an escort in this land. When you next meet Lady Menphilia, pray relay to her my humblest thanks. Would that I could do so in person, but I must needs fulfill the promise, my promise, to the Admiral. Till we meet again, Warrior of Light. Okay. And finally, back to Revenant's Toll. Bleep. Hi, kitty. Uh, this one. Kitty, I would really appreciate it if you would meow very loudly into the microphone. Ow, ow. I tried to pet him weird to encourage meowing. Instead, he just encouraged biting. So I bit him. I have been reflecting upon the events which took place during our visit to Vilbrand. If you have a moment, I would share my conclusions with you. Please, bear with me. When the Sahagin Elder summoned Leviathan, he employed the power we have come to know as the Echo. Though I cannot well explain the how of it, it would seem he became immortal in so doing. When the Admiral subsequently slew him, his spirit emerged from his lifeless flesh, a consciousness shorn of physical form. Thus transfigured, he took up residence in the body of his minion with the ease of a man donning a favorite glove. Long have I known that the Echo allows one to pass through the walls of a man's soul. But never did I imagine that it could free us from our own flesh no less that our souls could then occupy the next corporeal vessel to take our fancy. It was of this that Elidibus spoke, an existence which knows neither cessation nor oblivion. And yet, though the Sahagin had mastered his gift and thereby become immortal, he was by no means invulnerable. As we both bore witness, he was ultimately absorbed into Leviathan. And the import of this observation? If the Asian's mode of existence is indeed the same, it can be inferred that they too are not invulnerable, that they can be destroyed. This is what happens when you drink a Fantasia potion. You actually die and then your soul takes over another living person. It's actually really immoral. There exists a legend which tells of souls who are reborn upon the cusp of each umbral calamity that they might stay the encroaching darkness. To most, it is but a fairy tale. Yet recent events have given me cause to wonder. Could the legend in fact refer to the Echo? Much and more yet remains unknown, but I am confident that all will become clear in time. For the present, however, what matters is that the key to defeating the Asians may at last be within sight. With Orianger's aid, it is my hope that I shall fathom this matter ere long. Oh, I was just about to send for you, my friend. Is Otimus? Grave tidings from the Charlian motherland, my lady. It doth concern our distant allies, the students of Baldessian. What of them? My lady, 
The Isle of Val, which for many years hath been the Order's home, is no more. No more? Whatever do you mean? I relate only that which hath been conveyed unto me by our agents. An etheric wave of the highest magnitude was recorded in the region. Soon thereafter, twas observed that the isle had ceased to be. Neat. Tis postulated that a magic was evoked, like in power to Ultima. Twelve preserve. Such devastation. If there are no other matters, I move that today's meeting be adjourned. Dude just sat there for like eight hours. It is done, my lord. I... <clears throat> forgive my impertinence, my lord, but these orders... I am uncertain as to what end they serve. Revolution. <gasps> Wait, are these exactly the same? You just get to choose between strength and dexterity? Alright, well I'm gonna go with Gloam.